For a long time, we thought the Beretta 92 series wouldn't get optics due to how they were designed. And then Beretta recently issued the new lineup of the M9A4 and the new 92X RDO series of pistols that are in fact optics ready. And while the guns are improved as far as the triggers are concerned and the fact that there is a solution for mounting optics, I've been kind of less than impressed with the optics solution. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David, and you may notice that I don't have a gun in my hand, the M9A4. The reason it's not in my hand right now is because it's at a gunsmith because of that optics mounting solution. I can say to you wholeheartedly and enthusiastically the way that they've upgraded their triggers on the M9A4 and the new 92X RDO pistols has made the guns the highest quality they can be from the factory. Like there's not a tremendous amount of daylight between the from the factory trigger job on the these guns versus like my Langdon Tactical RDO guns. So that is all to the good. The bad is gonna be the whole optics mounting solution. So we're gonna kind of walk through the features on the pistol. Hopefully I get my gun back from the gunsmith in time and I'll get you guys some snazzy B-roll to feel good about. But in the interim, let's talk about the M9A4 and what I love about it and we'll finish with what I hate about it. But before we get going with that, if you like my content, you want to see more exclusive content behind the scenes stuff, check out my Patreon. It's very reasonable and you will get exclusive videos and articles articles that I write over there. There are hundreds of posts. And it wouldn't be a Humble Marksman video without talking to my YouTube manual reviewers. Y'all demonetize my video the second they hit your website, and then I have to appeal for manual review. So you, Mr. Manual Reviewer, this is the gun being reviewed in my video, and this is what it looks like on the manufacturer's website. It is bone stock from the box, baby. This is the absolute pinnacle of advertiser-friendly content. You can deny it, but you'll be wrong. So let's start with what I love about the Beretta pistol and what they've improved with it over previous generations. First and foremost, the M9A4 ships with the Vertec frame from Beretta. And what that is, is it eliminates the hump that's further down on the grip in the old 92 series frames, which makes the gun present more like a 2011 or a 1911, which is what I actually prefer. Those of you with smaller hands will likely prefer it as well because the trigger reach is improved. And from the box, on both the 92X series and the M9A4 series, Beretta offers two grip panel options. The gun will come with the Vertex style grips on either side of the pistol, but they also include a wraparound grip, which makes the profile mimic the old 92 profile. But more important than that is the texture that's on these little plastic rubber, whatever they are, grips. The texture on these grips is absolutely brilliant. You don't necessarily need to change the grips out to get it like an aggressive grip. Like I would feel totally fine competing with the grips that came on the gun if I were to compete with this gun. The texture is that good. The front strap is checkered, which is a bit of a premium feature. And more important, the slide is actually checkered, similar to the 92G Elites. But most importantly is the trigger is significantly improved from the old Beretta guns. It is much more akin to like a Wilson Combat Trigger or a Langdon Tactical Trigger than it is the old Beretta triggers. Now on my model of the gun, the double action pulls at about 8.75 pounds and the single action pulls at about 4.75 five pounds. While the quality of the trigger in single action isn't as good as what it is on my Langdon guns, it's it's not bad. And in fact, I'd say it's probably better than most. There is a small amount of crunch, which I suspect will continue to go away as the gun is fire fit together better. The double action on my Langdon guns is a little bit smoother. However, like we're talking a very minute shades of gray difference. So there is a little bit of rubbing you can feel as you pull through the stroke, but I mean, this is purely academic. It would in no way affect your performance with the trigger. Trigger. So all of that is to the good. Beretta is listening to the civilian market and making guns that we want to buy. And they tried, they really did try with their optics mounting solution, but it's a big fat failure. And I will tell you about that now. Now you may notice that in the B-roll video, I'm only shooting to 15 rounds. That's because I bought the first version of this gun available. It's sold with a 10, 15 and 18 round magazines. And from the box, which is a cool box, it's this ammo can. It comes with three magazines with matching base plates to match the finish of the gun, but mine are only 15 rounds. So that kind of sucks living in the free state of Texas, but I guess the people in Colorado who pretend like the magazine ban laws are still enforceable, they get really excited about that. So we're gonna work up the scale of what I don't like about the pistol to the stuff that has me just basically like, hey guys, I'm not sure why this gun is the way it is. So first and foremost, the most minor thing I can say about the gun is the fact that it comes with three dot night sights. The regular 92X pistols comes with a 
blacked out rear and a high vis front, which in my opinion is a superior sighting system. The three dot sights will be remembered in history as a joke that started in the 80s and died off eventually when people realized that it's a terrible sighting system. Moving up the chain, Beretta does not include any optics plates at the full MSRP sale price of $1,100 or whatever this thing is costing in the fourth quarter of 2020. That's what I paid for it back at the beginning of September. The problem is that I didn't get my one guaranteed free optic plate until the first week in December. I emailed Beretta customer support and it was crickets for six weeks. Then I got an email out of the blue like, hey, they're coming at the end of November, get ready. And then they did it. And then my buddy said, hey, the optics plates are for sale on the Beretta website, which is incredibly difficult to navigate your way through. And I bought a plate to just get this review out to you guys. And then a week later, they sent me my coupon code, which I redeemed for another site, which hasn't shown up yet, but it is the holidays. Sorry to complain about this, but I need to give you the full character where we're going here. So I mount a Delta Point Pro on my Delta Point Pro footprint plate, which was the only one available in a commonly available optic that I already had. And I was basically immediately disappointed with how high the darn thing sat. First and foremost, the optic plate that they provide to you is made out of aluminum, so it has to be really, really thick. And that that's gonna be foreshadowing for why the gun is at the gunsmith. The actual fitment of the optic plate into the slide is poor. I kind of had to force it in there. It's, it's, it's not a good fit. I mean, once you get it in there, it's not going anywhere. Basically, if you get the gun in your hand, imagine that the optic bottom is basically level with the top of the rear sight. That's when the base of the optic begins. So if you have a thick based optic like a Delta Point Pro, which is what I had, you get the full base height above that rear sight and then you have your dot. I mean, the presentation is very, very similar to like an open gun that I compete with in USPSA, which is fine for an open gun, and I understand why the dot is so high over the board, but for a slide right optic, it's just kind of strange. One thing that is cool is the kit comes with the screws necessary to mount the Delta Point Pro. It'd be good if they stated that on the website that the screws are included to mount the optic and they're specific to that optic specifically. I have another buddy with the 92X RDO and he tried to mount a hollow sun on his Trigicon plate and the screws just don't work on a hollow sun. The Trigicon and hollow sun bodies are different thicknesses and Beretta's screws only work for the Trigicon stuff. So like the plate is only for that specified optic. It's not just the footprint and here's a couple pairs of screws. It is only for that optic. So the dot rides stupid high, and why is that an issue? So if you're a patron, then you've already seen my video comparing the 92G Elite LTT to the Beretta M9A4 with the optics plate on there. Basically, there's so much turbulence with riding the sight that high above the bore, like it's, it's, it feels like the gun is recoiling a lot. And it's just because the higher you take the optic above the bore, the more drama you see as the slide reciprocates. So what I noticed between my Langdon Tactical guns and my Beretta was that I shot the Langdon guns faster because the sight is as low as you can get it to the top of the slide, which puts the dot much closer to the bore so the dot movement is not as exaggerated. With the M9A4, like I shooting visually, like at the speed of sight is what we say in competition, shooting at the speed of sight, it felt like it took longer to recover because there was just so much more movement to account for. And moving up from there, when I went to try and unmount the optic to make this video for you, I couldn't get the screws to come loose. Now I got my soldering iron out, I heated that bad boy up to 400 degrees Celsius and I held it on that screw for two, four minutes. Nothing. I couldn't get it off because the screws they use have a hex head adapter and not a Torx bit, which is what basically the rest of civilization has decided is a good idea for mounting optics on handguns. The problem is I quickly realized is that I was going to strip these screws if I kept going myself. So I dropped it off at my gunsmith and decided he can cuss at the darn thing and get the sight off for me. That's pretty frustrating as a dot shooter. You're probably picking up what I'm putting down if you shoot dots. But the next kind of step up is like, what's the point of the M9A4 in 2021? Now I understand why the M9A3 was introduced back in the day. It was Beretta's attempt to stop the modular handgun trials by giving them a new pistol that met all of the modern needs. That included a threaded barrel that you could mount silencers on. And this is circa 20 teens when put shooting handguns with suppressors on them was like a really cool novelty and a lot of people wanted to do it. And the Beretta action having the locking block is actually a really great platform to shoot silencers with. The problem is that in 2021, it's a five inch gun with a half inch extra barrel 
that is threaded. And at this point, the only thing people are putting on threaded barrels for pistols, it seems to be, are compensators. But putting a compensator on an already five inch gun is just, it's a bridge too far. Like you're basically making a five and a half inch gun at that point for a nine millimeter pistol. So the M9A4, in my opinion, if they wanted to do the whole threaded barrel thing, makes more sense with the Centurion length slide than it does their full five inch gun. So let's talk about what you're getting for that $1,100 spend. You're not getting optics plates in the box, that's for sure, but you are getting a cool box, which is important. You're getting an extra magazine, which is cool. Having three mags is better than two. You're getting a threaded barrel, which is of questionable necessity or use. You're getting worse, in my opinion, sights than you would get on the baseline pistol. You're getting a peanut butter colored frame slide and barrel, which is pretty cool if you like that sort of thing, which I certainly do, which is why I got the darn thing. You're getting an enhanced trigger and you're getting an optics ready capability that just isn't fully baked. Like they should have not released this gun. They should have gotten that right. So that's kind of the score with the gun so far. I bought it because it was available before the 92X RDO series, which is what I wish I would have bought in a Centurion length without a threaded barrel. And I would miss the peanut butter colored gun, but at the same time, it is pretty. I really like it. It looks awesome. So that's kind of my biggest issue with the gun is I'm just not really sure what the heck the darn thing's supposed to be for. It clearly could be a home defense or nightstand capable gun. It's not a good dot gun. It's not a competition gun necessarily. There are other options in their lineup that are better. That's kind of my criticism of the gun is that the optics mounting system is not great in the use case, just is kind of funky. But keep in mind that JJ Ricasa just won 2021 USPSA Carry Optics Nationals with a Beretta with the sky high optics look. So it's very capable to shoot fast if you are, but at the same time, the lower to bore axis guns offered by like the Langdon Tactical RDO are easier to shoot, at least for me. And I'm not bashing Berettas guys. Like I love the 92. I think it's one of the best shooting handguns you can get in nine millimeter. I love everything about it. I think the skeletonized slide is awesome. I think the way the guns shoot are awesome. The triggers are basically unparalleled from what the other manufacturers are doing. Like you can work on some other guns to make the trigger comparable but with the optimized triggers in the 92s like they are telepathic they're super easy to shoot i really really like the 92 series pistols which is why this review is so hard to make so sound off in the comments below what is your experience with the new 92 series of red dot pistols ben let us know in the comments and you could check out this video of my langdon tactical gun and this video youtube thinks you'll enjoy i appreciate you guys and i'll catch you on the next one